I'm E.B. Stevenson, and welcome to this EBTV video. As many of you know, I worked in the radio industry for 22 years and worked very hard. And during the whole time I was working in the industry, it got me to thinking, what would I have done had I owned my own radio station? Well, here's a bunch of things I would do totally different from other radio station owners. Number one, I started out in college radio and heard a lot of personalities I worked with to my college radio days that had a lot of potential. One of the reasons why I wanted to own a radio station was because I didn't want to see the potential, especially commercial potential, of the radio personalities I worked with thrown away by the industry, especially corporate owners. I would use college radio stations as the exclusive source of new talent. I would require anyone I put on the air to have at least an associate's degree in a communications related field. As they went to school and got the good grades so that they can work in the industry. Another thing I would do differently is to set aside a number of jobs behind the scenes for people with disabilities. They would not otherwise be working in any job at any radio station. You know, even a paraplegic can run an audio mixing console, or what we in the industry call a board. And they could, they could also run the computers and put together a website, for example. And some, some could even edit the news. A few can even present the news. And I've seen a number of people in wheelchairs that have worked as journalists on uh, TV. The idea I had was that people with disabilities and people who have worked in college radio and who are trying to get their careers going were the most discriminated against people seeking employment in the broadcast industry at that time. To me, I believe for on-air work, talent is secondary, not primary, secondary. Primary is education and experience, and that's what I had. And to have people with even minor disabilities working at a station I saw that as giving a station a positive image in the local community. I tend to have favored, I've always favored, air talent who lived, grew up, and trained for the industry in the city that a station is in. 
I pr usually would prefer St. Louis natives over bringing somebody from out of town at an additional expense. I've also thought about the idea of station employees owning a piece of the station they worked at. There are some things that I would throw out. One, one thing is ratings. I think the rating system is an artificial barrier to entry into the on-air world. And does not encourage real honesty in, in programming. I think the rating system is fake and is a deterrent to, to trying new ideas. and new policies. And I thought that radio needs to try new programming and employment policies and new programming ideas and instead of the same failed policy of it's not what you know, it's who you know and the same kind of programs that everybody else is doing. If you're trying to emulate everybody else, you're doing the public a disservice, in my view. When I got out of the radio industry in 2009, I, I was forced to retire. It was an industry that kept trying the same ideas I saw as failed ideas, same failed policies. Programming that's boring. I mean, who wants a music station that plays the same two, three hundred songs over and over again? Who wants a talk station that talks about the same extreme right-wing talking points over and over again. Well, those are not the kind of programming I'm looking for. And I believe that's the kind of programming that our local communities aren't looking for. Radio should not be trying to to go for extreme profits and operating with air talent that that didn't bother to finish college or even high school or hire only able-bodied or neurotypical people for for the jobs behind the scenes. Another idea I had was to have people who sold advertising that spoke more than one language. In many communities in the United States there are a lot of people who speak Spanish in addition to English. In St. Louis, for example, there's 40,000, give or take, people who speak the Bosnian language. And there's also an increasing number of people, especially in Hazelwood, where I live, that speak Arabic. And I think that having a second or even multiple languages is a good thing if you're selling radio advertising. And 
If I were to buy a radio station, the first thing I'd do is cancel my membership in the National Association of Broadcasters. Because they because I see them as not advocating the kind of policies that I would like to see. And that would be using college radio stations as the only source of new talent. Finding the talent from within the market and hiring people with even minor disabilities to work at a radio station. And I have never heard the National Association of Broadcasters support those kind of policies. And I had a bad experience with their employment clearinghouse 30 years ago. I was trying to find suitable broadcast employment in three areas where I had family. St. Louis, where I was born and raised. Metro Atlanta, where I was living at the time. And in Portland, Oregon, where I have relatives. They only sent my resume to three radio stations. The only one where I had distant relatives was in the Twin Cities, Minneapolis, St. Paul. They also sent one tape and resume package to a station in Des Moines. And the third one was sent to a radio station in Santa Rosa, California which was an hour north of San Francisco. Much too far from where I was looking. So... If I wanted to own a radio station, even in this day and age, I would not do the same things that all the other broadcasters were doing. I would stand out. In college radio we were taught to be bold, be different, be daring. If you're trying the same policies like if it's not what you know, it's who you know, and using artificial barriers like the rating system, you're not being bold, you're not being different, you're not being daring. You're being the same as everybody else. So if you own a radio station or want to own a radio station, just be brave, be daring, be different. Don't be like everybody else. This is E.B. Stevenson for E.B. TV. Thank you for watching.